This is Torsten from Ziklag Productions here again with Vespers and Warp Academy giving my first impressions of Cable Guy's newest plug-in, Time Shaper. As a drum and bass veteran, I'm super stoked to show you how this seemingly simplistic tool is saving me hours in studio and even inspires creativity while chopping up breaks for my next album. Let's take a look. When it comes to dance music production, my first love definitely is drum and bass. Thus, I have dedicated countless hours to painstakingly chopping up breaks, mimicking the unfathomably complex and diverse rhythms I have come to admire. Take, for example, this, the world-famous Amen Break. Here is that same break, this time manipulated by Time Shaper, with some background music layered in for perspective. Although cutting, rearranging, and splicing a break can be a gratifying experience in its own right, I for one have always hoped for a less tedious means to the same end. Various products do get close, but Time Shaper is the first to feel custom tailored to my personal workflow. The process really couldn't be simpler, so holding to my aforementioned nostalgia, let me show you how I used Time Shaper to manipulate the Amen into the example we just heard. To start the process, we navigate to the browser, then to my plugins, and I simply add Cable Guy's ShaperBox plugin to my audio track. Time Shaper lives inside of ShaperBox, which is much like a virtual rack, and I will click Time to add it to the chain. At its core, Time Shaper allows me to manipulate the timing of incoming audio by adjusting the green time offset bar located at the top. To the left, we see I can offset by a quarter of a bar, a half a bar, three quarters, anywhere up to an entire bar's worth of offset. Once I start audio playing, we also see a visualization of the waveform appear in the background. This oscilloscope actually depicts the waveform after Time Shaper's manipulation, so it becomes a handy visual reference since the time manipulation is likely to move the transients away from my grid if I am not careful. Generally, I like to pause the audio while I talk, but this waveform will disappear entirely when I stop the track like a so. Therefore, I will keep the track rolling and adjust the volume after the recording of the video so you can see these changes in real time. Both vertical and horizontal grids are divided by 16th note intervals when I have one bar selected here. This is indicated by the beat subdivisions along the X and Y axes where the vertical grid is simply compressed. I can expand it a little bit by clicking here, but you get the gist. So if I select the second step according to the horizontal grid, we are actually selecting the second 16th note of the loop. I can offset it backwards by one 16th note by dragging the offset bar down one step according to the Y axis. In other words, I'm telling Time Shaper, once you get to the second 16th note of the loop, go back one 16th note and play what you find there. Thus, we now hear the first kick playing twice. As the track continues to play, the offset bar glows white, indicating my current playback position relative to my host DAW. Of course, this is Ableton Live in my case. If I make any changes, a green line appears at the bottom, indicating the location of the playback relative to the sample itself. Also note that I have just disengaged step draw mode, which previously allowed me to simultaneously create two nodes having the same position according to the Y axis. With this now off, the slightest slope between these two nodes will alter the rate at which playback occurs. Thinking about it practically, I'm basically saying, start at the beginning of this sample, and by the time you reach the end of the bar, I want playback to be offset by a half a bar. Thus, the playhead moves along the slope, playing in half time, so that by the time it reaches this node, it is offset by one half bar. The more drastic the slope, the more you influence the rate of playback. Incidentally, moving the slope to zero will stop playback entirely. Here, I also told the device to play from the beginning and slow playback so dramatically that by the time you get to here, I want playback to still be at the beginning of the sample. Thus, there's no audio at all. This can actually be useful for making DJ-esque scratching effects when you need some silence between each chop. Similarly, if I make the slope even more dramatic, I can cause the sample to play backwards. Okay, Time Shaper, I want you to start at the beginning and play so that the sample is offset by an entire bar, 
by the time we're halfway through the bar, and the only way to do that, of course, is to play in reverse. Now that we are oriented, let's get to chopping up this break. Let's say I don't like the first kick, it's a little splashy, and I would rather hear the second one played twice straight from the jump. Since Timeshaper is scanning previously played audio, I need to offset the first beat by 7 eighths of a bar to rewind to the second eighth note of the loop. So now we hear this kick on the offset beat one, and again from where it was originally located on that second eighth note in that loop. At the beginning of beat three, let's offset by a quarter of a bar, and now we're hearing that snare located on beat two for a second time. I can save the pattern below so I can recall it at a later time, but if I want to get really crazy, I can use TimeShipper's multiband functionality to reconstruct audio for different frequency bands independently. By dragging this handle, I've now introduced a crossover with a defaulted 6 dB slope, and I can select the lower frequencies. Let's apply one of TimeShaper's presets to this. That sounds pretty cool. Let's do the same for the mids, but we'll create a scratching effect by introducing a slope to its offset line. Finally, let's stutter our hats by offsetting every other 16th note in the high frequency band. If I solo, we hear that these edits replay what immediately proceeds, just like with our earlier kick example. Finally, if I add just the slightest amount of slope, I can pull the highs out of phase with mids just enough to introduce some subtle comb filtering right at the crossover frequency. This is the same technique we use to slow the track to half speed, but we're slowing it so minimally that it mimics the effect historically achieved by dragging one's finger along the flange of two synced identical reel-to-reel -reel recordings. Yes, hence the name flange. If I'm now happy with my snapshot list, I can save everything as a preset here. Similarly, I can share or load presets from a wider community of producers. That's all good and well, but how is this influencing my production time? I mentioned that TimeShaper is maximizing my efficiency in studio, so let me show you how. I took a few minutes to create a few different variations of this break. I can turn on MIDI trigger so that the incoming MIDI notes will toggle between these alternate versions. Logically, I created a MIDI track with its output routed to TimeShaper in my Amen break track. The MIDI notes within this clip select a different version of my break at the beginning of each new bar. Let's take a listen. Once I am happy with my 16 bar loop, I add one final audio track and route its input to harvest my performance. I launch the scene and voila, my custom break is recorded to a new clip slot permanently saved as an audio file to add to my personal custom sound bank. Bottom line for me is that Time Shaper is already redefining how I manipulate breaks, glitches, vocals, etc. And since everything happens in real time, I even occasionally drop it on unrendered instrument buses like the scratch effect from my previous example. It offers comparable functionality to sampler based techniques while streamlining crossfades, pitch changes, scratching effects, multi band processing, the list literally goes on and on. Ultimately, Time Shaper keeps me feeling creative longer while providing me with more control over the samples that I'm manipulating. And for its modest price point, it's definitely worth some consideration when looking to enhance your plugin arsenal. This has been Torsten with Warp Academy, reviewing Time Shaper by Cable Guys. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll catch you in our next video. Yeah.